While today's readings may be quite heavy, in them I find great hope and light, in particular relevant to our times. We move from alienation and division and separation to Paul's vision of our being united in Christ's redemption to God in eternity. But that is a long way to go. And the Gospel of Mark is where we see the old divisions of me and you, us and them, particularly us and them, break down with a new focus on being united, but not in the old ways of being united with family or clan, village or community or nation, but united to God. This breaking down of the old divisions, us and them, is particularly relevant today because at this very moment, our society is obsessed with the idea of us and them. It's everything. Social media, politics, news, advertising, everything is broken down into us and them. It's all about forming groups or tribes through opposition and division, and it's used against us to do everything to make us buy things, to make us get all wound up and excited about particular issues. Division is a core part of this. Now, we see more people seeking to divide and reinforce this us and them, but we need healing. We need some sense of unity. We need a vision of a better way. Now we move from Genesis and the fall from God to Mark and becoming a family, but not just a normal family, a family with God and by God. Now Genesis opens with Adam's response to God. It was the woman that you put here that made me eat it. Adam breaks God's one commandment and in one sentence, he attempts to blame both God and Eve at the same time. This Adam is alive and well today, not taking responsibility and blaming everyone else around them. And I'm pretty sure that each one of us has met him lately. When Eve is given her chance, she blames the snake for choosing to ignore God's one command. In one fell swoop, we alienate man from God, man from man, and man from nature, all at once. Division is everywhere. But immediately, the responsorial psalm offers us early hope. Let your ears be attentive to my supplication. But with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him plenteous redemption. Even in the Old Testament, there is hope. But how do we get to Paul's vision, a vision of a building from God, not built with earthly hands, eternal in heaven? How do we get there beyond all this? The gospel is where all the action is, and it's where our guidance is for today and how to navigate our world. Now, Jesus has been going out and about He's been healing the sick and driving out evil. Crowds have formed so thick that he can't sit, he can't eat. In the midst of all this, Jesus' relatives do not recognize him. They do not recognize his new ministry and his new role. They declare him out of his mind and they want to seize him. The scribes have been following Jesus around now in the story for quite some time, and they're trying to trap him. They're trying to report him, and they're trying to seize him. They go so far as to declare that Jesus himself is possessed, and by the prince of demons, he drives out demons. For all of these people, Jesus is the them, the other, the one that you shun. His actions and his role are rejected by his family. His actions and his role are rejected by the scribes. And Jesus responds to them with a parable about division. That which is divided 
cannot stand. Not a house, not a kingdom, not the devil himself. We live in an era of division. We know division. And Jesus' actions are not division. They are united in the Holy Spirit and they are good. Jesus speaks to a new kind of unity, a new kind of family, and not the old traditional one, but one bound and united with God. God is the center of this new unity. God is the center of this new family. And these are not things of our world. Jesus' works were good and they were through the Holy Spirit. And more than any sin of the scribes, it was declaring the good works the works that drive out evil, the works of the Holy Spirit to be evil that gets the scribes in trouble. There are two things here. Only the Holy Spirit can produce the good of driving out evil. And declaring what is good from God to be evil is a most grievous sin and a rejection of God himself. This is relevant to us today. This is relevant to us versus them where any act by them is rejected instantly. And we can think about this, whether it's politics, whether it's church, whether it's any number of different issues. There's a group that is them. There are people who anything they do must be wrong. You would assume from the start that that is true. And that is not the unity that is being spoken of. Are we looking for the good? Are we looking to see where evil is driven away? Or are we rejecting others' good that is done in the Holy Spirit simply because they are them. And then there's the matter of family. Who is our family? Who builds us up? Our family leading to eternity is in Christ. Our brother, our mother, our sister are those who do the will of God. These are two new forms of unity, a new unity of family and a union with God that leads us back to God by recognizing the work of the Holy Spirit and embracing it, regardless of who that action was taken place by. If we can step back from the divisions of Adam, from the divisions cultivated in our own day, and search for the works of the Holy Spirit, wherever they may be, done by whomever, even someone we are told is the other, the them. Only then can we seek this new unity, this new family in eternity, our way back to God.